So the year is 2023, and I'm touring my way through the art scenes of Europe. Or at least that was the plan until a miscommunication with a travel agent meant there was only one day to trick my way into town and view one piece of art. To make the most of my time, I pick a piece I've been wanting to see for years in person. Gustav Klimt's The Kiss. When I saw The Kiss, I was most struck by the tiny details that photos just cannot do justice. The campus is square, 180 centimeters by 180 centimeters, and in the middle shows a man and a woman in gold gilded robes embracing each other. The man holds the woman's tranquil, closed-eyed face as he leans down over to kiss her cheek. It is a tender and mutual embrace as you can spy the woman's hand caressing one of his that touches her cheek and the other wrapped around his neck. Her skin is pale and his is just slightly more beige, painted soft textures and delicate line work that differentiates their form from the background and their clothes. The woman's dress hangs off her shoulders, organically patterned with bunches of multicolored circles, green, blue, orange, red, purple, on a golden fabric. She's propped up on her knees, and the dress's ribbons and tassels hang down over her calf and foot. The man's robes are geometrically patterned, full of black, silver, and white rectangles broken up by the occasional circular wave pattern. His sleeves are long, and his legs are hidden behind the robe that hangs on him like a tunic. The two are framed in part by a golden shroud which hangs off the man's shoulders and is most visible behind the woman's back. It is patterned with circles within circles, occasionally one with a pop of color to offset from the shimmering gold. The couple kneels upon a grassy patch that holds them up to the center frame. The patch is littered with small flowers, purple, blue, yellow, and orange. The background of the painting is a dark yellow, with splatters of brighter yellow and hints of geometric patterns like blocks covered by slightly wet paper, barely peeking through. It is plain compared to the golden figures in the foreground, and draws your eye back to the soft earth tones of the couple faces. The man's dark brown hair is adorned by a crown of vines, and his face is turned in towards the woman's cheek. The woman's face is out towards the viewer, but her eyes are closed and she looks peaceful. Her orange hair is full of small purple and blue flowers. Klimt painted the kiss in 1908, during what many historians refer to as his golden age. He was in the midst of recovering from infamy after a series of murals he developed for the University of Vienna caused a scandal with the university faculty. He was labeled an enfant terrible in the artistic community because of his casual use of the nude form and dark symbolism in this series. These paintings were destroyed in 1945 by retreating Nazi forces and all that is left of photos. In 1898, Klimt began by combining a number of influences which can be recognized in The Kiss. The style of Art Nouveau was growing in popularity during Klimt's golden age, whose influence can be seen in the long organic lines and patterns in the couple's clothing. Clint's use of gold leaf likely comes from his familiarity with gold as he was born into a goldsmith's family just outside Vienna. One of his chief influences are Byzantine mosaics, which he saw when visiting Italy. The culmination of influences forged Klimt's distinctive style, which gained immense popularity. The kiss was sold and even put on display before Klimt had even finished the painting. For the viewers of the early 1900s, and even those of today, Klimt's The Kiss is an illustration of love, tenderness, and intimacy. The symbolism of the piece is centered around the pureness and bliss of love. The painting itself becomes a symbol of wealth when considering the greater context of it. The day it was first exhibited, it was purchased for 50 times the amount a painting had ever been sold for in Austria at this time. In today's dollars, it's about $250,000. The kiss was sold and even put on display before Klimt even finished the painting. As one of Klimt's more conservative paintings, recreations of the image have been transformed over a huge range of different merchandises, from t-shirts and socks to mouse pads, purses, and coffee mugs. Anything you can find in a museum gift shop you can probably find with a print of the kiss. I kind of envy the viewers in the early 1900s who could have seen this painting without ever having seen a cheap recreation on a pair of bright yellow socks. 
Personally, I try to take the kiss out of context and just appreciate the beauty and feeling of tranquility it gives me. It's one of those paintings that just makes you feel something. It makes me feel calm and love, and I get the feeling that that was Klimt's real intention behind the piece. It's not much deeper than that. By taking this class, I better understand how Klimt achieves these feelings and communication, and I definitely have a deeper appreciation for the work. Ultimately, though, I think the kiss is one of those pieces of art that doesn't need a lot of analysis or explanation. I can just connect to it and understand that it's about love. There's a million reasons why and how, but what makes the kiss so impactful to me is that you don't need a lot of cultural references to understand it. Of course, knowing about the history of gilding and other references in Klimt's work helps me understand how the painting makes me feel the way it does. But there's something to be said about the raw emotion you can get by looking at a piece of art like this one.